Okay, perfect. Thank you all for joining us today for Joel Grant's Pathy Foundation Fellowship final presentation. As we get started here, I just want to acknowledge that for his fellowship, Joel was traveling far and wide, but his um, core home or base for the work he was doing was in Dejoge or Montreal, Quebec, uh, which is on unceded Ganyagahaga territory. Today's presentation is going to start with about 20 minutes from Joel himself, and then we're going to move into about a 20 minute Q&A. Joel has an undergraduate degree in mater materials engineering and a master's degree in chemical engineering, both from McGill University. He's from Cochrane, Alberta, and grew up playing ice hockey competitively until the age of 20. Then he moved out, out east and attended university in Montreal. Joel is a Métis citizen um, of the Métis Nation of Alberta. While at university, Joel lived on campus at the First People's House at McGill and was involved in several extracurricular activities, including community-driven adri initiatives through the American Indian Science and Engineering Society, otherwise known as ACES. As the president of ACES, Joel helped them win the Preston Phipps Equity and Diversity Award in 2020. This award was presented for student initiatives to promote equity, diversity, and inclusivity. It was noted that Joel's leadership and tireless efforts have had a significant impact to support Indigenous students at McGill and for STEM outreach to local Indigenous youth. As a senior camp counselor at the Eagle Spirit Science Futures Camp for the past four years, Joel has continued to illustrate his passion for working alongside Indigenous youth to find connection between one's culture, community, as well as STEM. I had the pleasure to meet Joel first time in Nova Scotia in our pre-community phase uh, in uh, last August. Is laid back, casual, and let's just enjoy this attitude made me say, I really want to be friends with this guy. Joel taught me that I'm not as good as I thought at ping pong, but we've also had wonderful conversation about Indigenous social challenges and prejudices, but in more interestingly, we had very enlightening uh, conversation about the cultural richness of the communities in which we work with. Um, my favorite moments with Joel, I would say moments, is when he randomly goes on what he calls these rants, uh, but I call them enlightening moments of truth sharing. Uh, so to this I say, Joel, please stop apologizing for these rants and please just let me take notes. Um, that's really beautiful. I think we all appreciate Joel's rants quite a bit. Uh, I'm going to be moderating the presentation today. So if you have any questions or comments or any topics you want Joel to comment on in the final section of this presentation, please share it in the chat. Um, you can also share on the Facebook live stream. We're monitoring that section as well. And so it is with great pleasure that I pass this off to Joel. Uh, thanks, Emily and Dom, for the wonderful introduction. I really appreciate it. And welcome, everyone. Uh, I'd like to begin with an acknowledgement um, for this project uh, called Two-Eyed Seeing uh, Indigenous Network, uh, TESSEN for short. And I'll get into that shortly, exactly uh, what that means. But uh, I've been very fortunate uh, to have an incredible support network. Um, and there's a lot of uh, people, individuals, um, institutions, and groups that I have to uh, acknowledge and thank that this project wouldn't be possible if it weren't for their support and help, and also from my nation, uh, Métis Nation of Alberta. So um, I'm a citizen of the Métis Nation of Alberta, Region 3, Treaty 7 territory, and I grew up in uh, Cochrane, just outside of uh, Calgary, but I decided to go um, out east and, and attend university at uh, in McGill there. And um, I just have to thank uh, the Pathy Foundation Fellowship uh, for all of their support networks, uh, the Cody Institute, um, Adam, Jess, Sarah, and uh, the First People's House at McGill University, um, as well as We Matter. Um, I received uh, funding from We Matter and uh, ACES, the American Indigenous Science and Engineering Society, um, as well as Carrie Lynn Paul, uh, my resource person, um, my nation, the MNA uh, through Rupert's Land Institute. They also um, helped fund a bit of this project. And I would also like to thank, and uh, I really appreciate our cohort um, this year, um, we formed a, a strong connection and a bond and I, my weekly meetings, uh, triad meetings with uh, Emily, Courtney, uh, and Dom, uh, they were very, very beneficial and, and helpful throughout the project. And I also want to thank uh, Ben Jabot, uh, Gaguilla, and uh, the Medicine Bear Singers, um, uh, Matt, and uh, many, I'm sure I'm forgetting some people. Um, but most importantly, I want to thank uh, Alex Gray, who I think is 
in in the room, uh, which is incredible because this project I worked on with him, and uh, he's really the all-star. So he's representing the Indigenous Health Professions Program at McGill, who um, is the main partner in this project um, in terms of uh, what we worked on. And I'll just give a little bit about my background um, and kind of talk about the community and how this project came about. So um, growing up, I was uh, very fortunate um, to play ice hockey. Um, so that's me playing ice hockey. And then I actually ended up coming to uh, McGill University as a mature student. And I just remember when I was super young that um, I had this uh, mentor who was uh, my teacher and also uh, my hockey coach. Um, so he was my science teacher and he really engaged me in science and uh, helped me develop a connection actually between playing ice hockey and, and science. Cause I remember learning about physics for the first time and he was talking about friction and how a blade uh, glides on the ice. And I just thought that was the coolest thing. And, you know, I maybe didn't pay too much attention to math and physics before then, but as soon as I saw that connection, I was like, Oh, this is kind of cool. Um, you know, I, I can, you know, kind of see when I, and think about that when I'm playing hockey for fun. Um, and then, you know, that, you know, things like that and, and uh, having a coach and a mentor who pushed me in the right direction, I'm very grateful for. So that led me to go into, uh, you know, science and engineering and, and pursue a, a materials uh, science degree um, and then grad school um, in chemical engineering. And this is a poster. Um, the second image here is where I, um, presented a poster at the American Indian Science and Engineering Society uh, conference, I believe, in uh, Denver, Colorado. Um, so I attended this conference, and Alex Grave, um, who was uh, attending McGill University at the same time, he introduced me to this organization, uh, ASIS, um, which is has this whole goal and mindset to encompass um, you know, traditional knowledge and to be pr uh, proud of your uh, your nation and your community and where you're from uh, and to represent that uh, in, in the fields of STEM and sometimes STEAM. So I always have to catch myself. Um, I say a lot STEM, science, technology, engineering, math, and medicine, um, but add the A in there and it's STEAM because art is important as well, um, which I'll show in a bit because uh, uh, with our videos and, and I make some uh, digital developments as well. But um, this is a picture of FPH um, up in the top right and it's, it's a community away away from home that um you know is uh, very diverse um we have first nation inuit and metis representation and uh, there's weekly soup and bannock and before the pandemic it was uh, quite a vibrant place and i actually lived there for five years through my undergraduate um degree and then uh, into my master's so i even was living there at the start of pathian unfortunately they had to kick me out finally <laughs> um but i had uh an incredible time there and I'm grateful for so much support. Um, and the bottom right is the Medicine Bear Singers. So um, I'm not sure if Ben's here, but he he brought me along to um, learn some songs and drum and uh, Alex was our drum keeper. And, uh, you know, it's very, very uh, welcoming uh, that they brought me in. And traditionally, um, my understanding at least is uh, Métis people, um, we, we do drum, but we don't have our own like nation songs particularly. So, um, them just bringing me into that group, I, I'm very grateful for. And uh, I was taught some songs, but it's, you know, it's very important to keep those songs to when we're only playing with each other. Um, you know, in the Montreal area, you never take those songs elsewhere um, because, it, you know, they're very sacred to that nation and that community. And it's an honor to be able to um, learn a song or two um, and play it with the group. And then lastly, this is my graduation in 2018, where my mom came and this was like the first time she came in after six years of uh, finally, you know, completing my my undergraduate degree and and uh, she came and it was amazing because she could put names to faces. Um, I'm very close with my mom and she uh, came and she met Alex and a few other of my close friends and colleagues um, after so, so much time uh, where I would just be talking on the phone and I didn't get a chance to, to go home back to Alberta for quite a quite a while. So that was very special to me um, as well. So this is just some more highlights of uh, kind of uh, just to, you know, engage you in uh, the community that I'm, I'm part of and where the pro my Pathy Foundation project took place, um, uh, interconnected with the First People's House at McGill, um, IHPP, um, which is the Indigenous Health Professions Program, and then ACES, and then our CASES conferences. And I think uh, my colleague and friend uh, Felix is here as well, so I'm happy to have him. I told him there were some really cool action shots, uh, he, and I'm excited he's going to be a Pathy Fellow this upcoming year. So this is Felix, and we attended the ACES um, 
national conference and we won an award um, primarily due to this incredible conference that uh, was organized at McGill University. Um, this is it right here. Uh, I believe that was 2018, the end of 2018. And uh, we organized that and the whole, and this is the uh, powwow here. So um, this is the McGill powwow that happens every fall. Um, and this is at the Eagle Spirit Science Futures Camp and then also the science fair. So we were science fair judges. And these are the kinds of activities that uh, are, were related to, uh, I guess I would group into outreach, um, which I'm a part of. And then this leads into the Eagle Spirit Science Futures Camp, um, which is organized by Alex and the Indigenous Health Professions Program. And I was very fortunate to be a senior camp counselor um, for about three years now. And due to the pandemic, um, unfortunately, we had to transition the camp to a, a virtual um, video uh, platform. And here's Alex right here. Um, and then this is me uh, trying to blow some bubbles. <laughs> and this is the group. And it, it's a really amazing um, camp that's one week every year, uh, usually around July, um, where we uh, bring together traditional knowledge uh, with science activities and then also um, physical activities like sports and things and the ki kids um, indigenous youth I believe ages 13 to 17 come every year to uh, the camp at, that's hosted at McGill University right on the campus and uh, it's a, a really amazing time and hopefully they can have the camp uh, come back to its uh, normal uh, format uh, with regard to uh, all these exciting like action shots you see and and the kinds of things that we're we're doing at the camp. Um, but this leads me to my Pathy Foundation uh, Fellowship Initiative and project um, where um, it's called Tessin. So the whole idea behind Tessin is two-eyed seeing, um, which is a indigenous um, broad indigenous term uh, developed by Elder Albert Marshall, um, who is Mi'kmaq, um, and he is an elder who coined this term, I believe, in the early 2000s. Um, and it kind of is to encompass uh, two-eyed seeing in the sense that one uh, lens and one framing is the indigenous perspective uh, when approaching uh, knowledge and, and understanding things and, and uh, science or other ways of thinking. And then the other lens is other knowledges that are well known or est established um, uh, that, that could be uh, any kind of uh, another culture like um, you know, Western science perspective or something like that. So uh, that was the initial definition to my understanding, but it, over the years, it's kind of really uh, developed and changed or adapted. And I like the, the thinking about uh, two-eyed seeing in the sense that first and foremost, we look through the indigenous framing and indigenous perspective. And then we kind of um, see how we can make a connection with uh, another perspective or another knowledge. In, in our case, with a lot of the work that Alex and I do, um, it's connecting a science activity or a science concept or engineering application uh, and cool things like that. So, um, you know, my why is always to to try and, uh, you know, help uh, work alongside and, and help, uh, you know, instigate a, a curiosity, hopefully, in science activities with Indigenous youth. Because, um, as I mentioned, I was very lucky uh, growing up and, you know, playing uh, sports. And uh, I was kind of always a, a bit of an oddball in the sense that I remember like when I was uh, in high school, um, I'd be riding the bus to different towns uh, to play ice hockey games with my hockey team. And a lot of the guys were playing like cards on the bus and uh, having a lot of fun with that. And I was the guy in the corner at the window seat, uh, you know, doing my physics. Um, and I don't mean anything, uh, you know, good or bad about that. It's just, it, you know, I was kind of like the, the odd guy and I used to get poked at, uh, made fun of a little bit about saying, oh, what, you, being called a nerd, whatnot. <laughs> but uh, I guess uh, I, you know, that's uh, how I made that connection because of that uh, mentor and how I was pushed in that way. So that's whole kind of the whole encompassing why is uh, of my project. And, and it starts off with, you know, I focused on three main things throughout uh, this initiative. Um, we did uh, created videos. So we tried to, you know, take the Eagle Spirit Science Futures Camp um, and make the virtual developments of that. So in video format, you know, connecting traditional knowledge with a, a science application or an experiment. And then I also focused on actual outreach. So I went with the Indigenous Health Professions Program uh, and Alex, and we did a few outreach trips to uh, the local uh, communities like Ganawage. Um, I also went to his home nation, uh, Listagush. Uh, he was very welcoming to take me there, and I, I met his family and, and saw his uh, school where he grew up uh, studying. So 
um, I'll be sharing some videos about that and, and also kind of the things we worked on. And then lastly, I, I went into some uh, virtual developments and I made some um, artificial intelligence art. Um, so anytime I made these different uh, um, projects or initiatives within my you know, overall fellowship, um, I was always circling back to the why. And uh, I remember at the beginning of the Pathy Foundation Fellowship, it was we had a um, you know a summer of preparation before our in community phase, and that was very helpful because I learned about this asset based approach um, in terms of uh, you know approaching a community where um, you're either a part of or you're or if you're even if you're not a part of you want to you know kind of talk to people and and frame things through their lens and their thinking and find out the information and ask questions and don't just come in with the perspective of, oh, I'm going to help and I'm going to change and I'm going to and make the, make a difference. Um, so uh, at the beginning, I actually wrote um, a chapter. Uh, I was approached by this professor, Amy Kim, and so was Alex. Um, and she published this book actually in, in January of 2021. So it's a it's a book um, that is really, you know, encompasses uh, kind of the idea of our Pathy Fellowship Project as well. Um, you know, kind of looking at relationships between indigenous knowledges and uh, Western modern science um, and seeing the difference and, and uh, why it's such a challenge because there, there's uh, really a need for more um, indigenous, um, you know, nurses, um, uh, doctors, uh, engineers, uh, technicians, and anyone who uh, wants to bring uh, different skill sets to their community um, be, because there's such a shortage and very low um, representation. Um, so this book kind of, you know, examines how we can go about um, creating interest and um, excitement about, around and a connection to community and also teaching in a different way and thinking about that. Uh, I, my, I don't have a background in, in education, but I'm always very um, interested in, in seeing how uh, our experiences play out when working with uh, Indigenous youth. So at the beginning of my Pathy Fellowship, um, Alex and I each wrote a chapter, and I, I was also hesitant to write this chapter because it was um, basically my life story, and I had to talk about my uh, my upbringing and and my mom and and our our connection to our nation. Uh, my, both my mom and I don't speak Michif, which is the language of uh, the Métis people, and uh, so you know I was and I and I thought, oh well, you know, Amy, you should talk to a guy like Alex, um, who is First Nation and grew up in his community, uh, knows his language, um, has a lot of traditional knowledge. And, uh, and then I, I came to learn um, throughout my experiences that, um, you know, there's, there's a need at every, every um, level in terms of uh, allyship and um, people who are well connected to their community and people who are less connected or, and trying to make a difference to connect more um, because uh, everything makes a difference. And, uh, you know, I, I was very appreciative to be welcomed um, in many, uh, you know, regards to working in, in these projects and initiatives uh, by people like Ben Jabot, uh, Gaguilla, um, who actually recruited me to come to uh, the University of McGill. And uh, I wouldn't be here if it weren't for people like them and, and uh, pushing me along and, and helping me to uh, learn and, and give back as well. So now um, it's, it's my turn. And uh, this leads me into some video examples that I want to talk about. Um, so this is uh, a truth and reconciliation video that I filmed. Um, and this is just a little snippet. So I apologize. There may be some delay in the videos um, because it's, uh, you know, uh, a little hard to embed it in the PowerPoint presentation, but hopefully you can listen to the voiceover. Um, and the voiceover, Alex does the voiceover in, in our videos, and he is incredible. On September 30th, 2021, the very first National Day for Truth and Reconciliation took place along with Orange Shirt Day. Indigenous peoples and allies gathered on the traditional territory of the Kanyege Haga, a place which has long served as a site of meeting and exchange amongst many First Nations, including the Kanyege Haga of the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, Huron Wendat, Abenaki, and Anishinaabe. This day honors the lost children and survivors of residential schools, as well as their families and communities. So this video, that was just a little snippet of the Truth and Reconciliation Day March in Montreal that happened in September of 2021. Um, and this was, I 
basically my role within Tessin uh, or this initiative project is I focus mainly on like directing and editing, uh, whereas Alex uh, is the storyteller and, and the voiceover. And he's incredibly talented, um, as you can see in, you know, see in a few other examples that we're going to show. Um, but I've also been dabbling in sound. So I've just wanted you to listen to the sound in the background. Hopefully you can hear that. It was just me you know, recording the sounds of the city that day um, and things like that. So I'm, I'm very interested in like learning what's so great about the Pathy Fellowship is that we can learn, um, you know, technical skills. Uh, I, I was able to get a drone license and purchase a drone because I'm a stock footage uh, collector and it's always important. A lot of these uh, footage that you see is, is stock footage from free, you know, royalty free uh, websites that are accessible, but also some of them are actually like um, footage taken from our drone shots, uh, like the beginning uh, images you saw during the introduction of this presentation. And this is a cool science video um, about insulation in wigwams where Alex narrates and kind of this will give you an idea about a science video where he tells a story at the beginning, making a connection to his community. And then usually we follow that by um, the actual science behind uh, whatever concept we're talking about. And then lastly, we, we do an experiment uh, on video. And this kind of follows the exact same theme that's done at the Eagle Spirit Science Futures Camp in person. Insulation and how traditional indigenous dwellings kept our ancestors warm and dry year round. From the Arctic of the North to the deserts of the South and even beyond. Turtle Island has been home to indigenous people since time immemorial. In that time, we've developed deep relationship with the respective habitats and fauna that we live in. Regardless of what climate or region your nation calls home, our ancestors all had ways of living that incorporated the natural world around them. A common problem that comes about when living on the land is exposure to the elements. And even though that differed based on location. So that video um, is incredible. Uh, and Alex is, you know, making a connection to uh, his ancestors um, and basically figuring out um, insulation and how to take care of themselves in colder climates uh, such as winter. Um, and oftentimes I find that colonial uh, perspectives really like to make it sound like um, new inventions and new technologies are, are advancements of uh, more of a, you know, colonial, uh, you know, frontier logic thinking, um, whereas, you know, indigenous peoples for millennia have already solved many technological issues um, in, in uh, you know, rela relating to, uh, you know, humans and, and survival and things like that. So here's another Insulation. cool video that I'm going to show, uh, or a part of it, where he's talking about snowshoes. Um, in this instance, I used snowshoes to travel to my friend's house, but for my ancestors, Snowshoes were crucial in their very survival. As I mentioned in the previous experiment, my ancestors were semi-nomadic and lived deep in the woods during the winter months. To get around the deep snows found in the woods, my ancestors used something called alakamik, or snowshoes, to help them hunt animals to feed their families. Now, before we dive into our experiments, and learn about how snowshoes keep us from sinking into deep snow, we have to talk about some of the science behind it all. The first two topics we'll be discussing are weight and area. I think so. As you saw there, um, he does an introduction telling a story and making a connection, and then now he goes into the science um, with regard to pressure, area, force, and he gives examples like uh, throwing a baseball um, and then actual definitions of like how to calculate area with length times width. The reason width. why we need to know these topics is that they are both very important in helping us understand the science behind why snowshoes work. When we take the amount of force that is applied to the area of a surface, we get something called pressure. Using a math equation, we calculate pressure by taking the force and dividing it by the area that it's being applied to. In this instance, I used some more. Just and then he carries out an experiment that is just awesome, where he's actually pressing um, 
Oh, I don't know if you saw that. Uh, the video is a little leggy, but he goes into pressing uh, powder and making little, uh, you know, formations in powder and then measuring the depth and the area that's been compressed uh, from the force applied. So very, very, very cool. Um, and then this is, uh, that kind of encompasses a bit of uh, the video perspective of the initiative. And then now um, I'm going to go more into the outreach. So uh, as I mentioned in the beginning, this is an incredible uh you know, thing that Alex invited me to visit his community and his home. And uh, I'm very grateful for that. And, and uh, this is just a little video that I'm going to talk over as he's, you know, going back to his uh, school. And I mean, I don't want to throw him on the spot, but in maybe in the questions and, and uh, answers period, you can definitely ask him because he's here and, and uh, he can probably t speak to this way, way better than me. But um, his mom is actually a teacher and this is her classroom. And it's just incredible. Um, because this is not the type of classroom that you will find, um, you know, in a big city urban environment, a Catholic or public school. Um, this is a, a classroom where, um, you know, this connects traditional knowledge and teaching um, with all kinds of different activities. And, and as we went to List Gush, uh, Alex performed a, a moose dissection, uh, moose heart dissection. So if you're a little uh, squirmy about um, blood, I apologize. Um, maybe look away for the <laughs> duration of this video. And then the rest of the next video I'm going to show, I, I um, took out the, uh, the color um, uh, due to uh, the graphic uh, nature of the, the moose uh, heart. But anyway, this is um, the classroom where I was uh, able to come and, and uh, meet with the kids. And, and Alex is now examining the, the moose heart that he, we've uh, been given from the hunters. And this leads me to the next uh, portion of this video. And I hopefully you can hear, um, don't worry about the leg, but uh, this is really funny. I find this quite a gem because um, uh, you can hear the kids talking and kind of saying, like, oh no, when, when the, the lesson is over. Um, but what something that I want to share that's quite incredible that I noticed or picked up during this moose heart dissection is, um, you can see Alex in the back there with the older kids um, dissecting and going through the lesson. And then at, in the back table here, the younger kids are there. So this was kind of like a big brother, uh, big sister moment where the, ki the younger kids were just like, you know, looking at these, their role models. You know, I remember when I was that age, I thought, you know, uh, uh, a guy playing hockey a couple of years older than me was like, he was an all-star. And so I, you know, this is really inspiring and this is what creates interest and something I observed. And I thought was uh, really uh, incredible to see. And then the, they rotated the classes through. So a bunch of different classes of younger kids got to come by and see uh, what the big kids were doing at the table. Um, anyway, this is us uh, gonna hear exactly how Alex goes about his teaching. And Alex is, has a special way of um, connecting uh, with youth. It's really incredible. Is this a vein? No, yeah. Yeah. Why, why do you think that's a pain? Because it's elastic. Because it's shut, right? Look, I can actually stretch this out and it still has kind of some form. This is just kind of wide open. Right? That's, an that's an artery. So that's an artery, exactly. Right. right. The fact that, you know, between ourselves and our four legged cousins, the blood is, runs the same way between all of us. We breathe the same air in the same way. We're not only connected, you know, that was with responsibility, but within them, it's the same thing as us. There's a beauty in that. Mm. All right, guys. So we're about to close up shop here, I think. Oh no! Get a few more uh, views. <laughs> yeah, bye bye. Get a few. I hope you heard that. Oh no! Um, but what's so amazing about this, uh, which uh, reminds me of a, another story, working at the Eagle Spirit Science Futures Camp, and kind of like you saw, he made a connection there between the moose heart and humans, and then also the importance. Um, so I remember at the beginning of this. Uh, moose heart dissection. Actually, every, all of the students came and gave uh, a blessing um, before conducting the dissection and, um, you know, gave thanks to, to the moose and, and the sacrifice. And then also we talked about how all every component of the moose was used. Um, you know, they made uh, moose sausages and nothing went to waste. So um, that's also very important. And then I mean, I remember during an Eagle Spirit Science Futures Camp, like an example of a day would be in the morning we uh, an elder was brought in who told a story one day um, about this pike fish creation um, from his nation. And then immediately after that, we went to the laboratory and we actually dissected pike fish with the kids and the elder came along. So as we were dissecting the fish, you know, we were learning about the biological components 
um, you know, but like the lungs or the uh, gills, um, the heart, uh, as we were dissecting the fish. And then also the elder was reiterating um, the story and what each um, part of the pike fish uh, represented. So that was just like, you know, an example of how we, we can make the connection with these things. And then Alex does it so um, effortlessly um, in, in outreach initiatives like this. And these are just some um, shots of, you know, the group there uh, doing the dissection and, and uh, having a great time. And then we, we also do outreach um, in the classroom and presentations. So Alex here is presenting about blood circulation um, to different classes that rotate. And we've gone to Ganawage. Um, this is in his home nation, Listagush, again. Um, so I'll just let this play through and then, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so there's him presenting and then I'm presenting, he's taking my blood pressure and uh, he said it was a little high. Um, and then there's myself talking. So one thing I want to uh, reiterate is that, um, you know, uh, they, a lot of academia and uh, likes to use the, the term indigenous and uh, the broad indigenous community. And obviously the definition through Canada is uh, Inuit, Métis and First Nation peoples. And, uh, you know, we, what's beautiful is we can always find commonalities amongst each other, um, but we're also very different. You know, there's over, I think, 600 uniquely distinct First Nation communities in Canada. Um, the Métis people are from out west, um, in, in western regions of Canada, and uh, Inuit are from the northern parts of Canada. And, and uh, you know, it's really amazing when we come together, uh, we can find these commonalities, but also to be aware, you know, I, I always... Um, kind of branch when I talk to Indigenous youth. Um, I use sports, and I remember we also went to um, a science fair in Ganawage, uh, the KSS, the survival school um, there, and it was amazing to see the First Nation uh, Indigenous youth there. A lot of their projects, especially the boys, were presenting uh, lacrosse, um, the evolution of lacrosse sticks um, through time. So they had their ancestors lacrosse sticks and then they had the new like aluminum ones, uh, which were not as cool, but it was just uh, awesome to see how they were connecting sport. And, you know, we talked hockey and um, that's usually how I <laughs> uh, engage in conversation. And, and we were, Alex and I were amazed, or maybe Alex knew this already, but I was amazed because a lot of the teachers came up to us and they're like, wow, um, these, the youth has never been so engaged because they, they don't, you know, this was, they, they, they saw uh, two men, young men, um, who were talking about science and making a connection to their passions and their interests related to that. And it was just like, they, you know, they weren't used to seeing that. And so they were, they, they were just like, you know, fully engaged and, and listening. And that was something really um, awesome to hear. And it really resonated with me that uh, there needs to be, um, you know, young indigenous men mentors um, just like I had when I was young uh, with my hockey coach any kind of mentor and an ally um, someone from the community or someone who can you know make those uh, connections uh, with commonalities across the broad you know indigenous community or or uh, anyone who you know wants to work alongside youth and uh, and help um, you know create positive change. So this is uh, an outreach we did with uh, the Faculty of Engineering, um, Indigenous Health Professions Program as well. And um, we went to uh, Ganawage and Alex kind of had this really cool um, exercise where we talked to the youth and, and we were talking about health and what does it mean at different levels? So what does it mean in, inside your home? Uh, what does it mean inside your community? And uh, what does it mean uh, you know, in a school setting. So we had uh, like little shoe boxes and they could build, you know, uh, a hospital, uh, mental health, um, you know, building for mental health uh, help and other, you know, aspects, what, how they kind of perceived it through their lens. And then we talked about at each level uh, with different groups um, kind of uh, as an exercise. And yeah, I just want to, um, you know, wrap up my presentation here soon. There's a lot actually that I have to, that I'd love to share more, but um, yeah, these are just some awesome uh, pictures of the, a few of the medicine bear singers uh, on the right. Um, and then the truth and Sec reconciliation uh, march. And then uh, it's kind of cut off, but uh, here's uh, my good colleague and friend, Gaguila and Jeff Morneau. Um, I did some other outreach initiatives, like went to um, the uh, First Nation Hotel 
uh, with Jeff Morneau on an outreach uh, trip where, and that was in near Quebec City and Wendaki uh, Nation. So uh, we went there and went to different CJEPs and talked to uh, kind of like the uh, native uh, center at these schools and then kind of, you know, did a connection and they asked me questions about what it's like to, to go to the university and uh, why, you know, what they were studying, uh, science or arts. And um, so it was fun to take along for outreach initiatives like that as well. And lastly, um, kind of like a, a 180 here, um, but unfortunately during my fellowship, uh, I had to go home uh, for a bit during the um, month of December and January because my mom had fallen sick. Um, so I went home to Alberta and uh, we, I was, you know, dabbling because I'm always curious. Um, as I mentioned, I got a drone and, and I was flying that around. And then I started to learn about computer programming, uh, more so like Python programming. And, and I realized that uh, there's this really cool um, way to make uh, artificial intelligence art. Um, so I started to make this project with my mom. Um, and essentially the goal of it was to uh, document the evolution of machine intelligence um, through an indigenous perspective, uh, mainly uh, mid-chief culture. And I've been creating uh, AI digital works uh, that encompass uh, computational um, neural networks uh, of mid-chief culture and language data. So um, a lot of the language that I use um, is uh, from the Gabriel Dumont Institute, which is kind of like the records keeping uh, in the modern age of uh, mid-chief culture and language, um, and also uh, documenting our history. Because uh, I don't know if you got a chance to see Dom's presentation, but it was lovely because uh, she really highlighted um, how traditional um, ways of record keeping for indigenous peoples is primarily oral, um, as opposed to uh, the more colonial um, perspective of where they document um, everything and and it's every it's about ownership and it's about writing down uh, things on paper and putting pen to paper. Um, so I wanted to kind of just you know out of curiosity mainly create this collection, um, and it it explores um, broad indigenous terms as well as um, Michif, uh themes uh, like the Red River uh, Métis sash. So there's a lot of colors that I use are from the Métis sash colors. Um, flower beadwork people is what the Métis people are known as. Um, a lot of flowers and colorful representations um, in our finger weaving. Uh, and then also like uh, flute, Métis cart, Métis script, um, the buffalo hunt, uh, and many other um, explorations of Michif stories. Um, so if you're interested, I can definitely share a lot more. But uh, here's just an example of, uh, I use, uh, you know, data to create um, these. And a lot of it's trial and error. Um, so the picture on the left is called stride. Um, and Ayan Grandpa is, is kind of the translation in Michif uh, to all my relations, which is a broad indigenous term. Um, but I think it was originally um, developed by the Dakota. Um, Gagwila could correct me on that um, if, I, if I'm a little off. But um, it's uh, you know, kind of stride and looking into the, the future and the distance. And then on the right, I have another broad indigenous term that I, I used in the data um, seven generations. Um, and seven generations is to look to the future and the past and to you know, work for towards uh, climate sustainability, uh, environmentalism and taking care of, of the land um, for our future generations. And here's, uh, I think my favorite one is on the left here where um, it's called, I named this one Michif Anti and my uh, tant in Michif language. Um, and as you can see, it really encompasses the flower beadwork, I, I see this as a, an ant, an auntie in a field full of flowers. And then on the right, uh, we have uh, Ian Lu, the wolf, um, just with the kind of like the night sky and some planets and, uh, you know, the stars, which uh, is the way I interpret it. So uh, those are up to interpretation, however you like, but uh, I think I'll conclude my presentation there. And thank you so much for tuning in. And let me know if you have any questions. I would Love to discuss more. Awesome. Thank you so much, Joel. That was so incredibly fantastic. Um, as we're moving into the Q&A now, I would invite people who are comfortable to turn their cameras on so that Joel isn't just speaking to a bunch of little Zoom screens. Uh, and if you have any questions or anything else, please, please, please share them because this is now a great opportunity for Joel to be able to engage with those. 
But to get us started, um, Joel, you've shouted out a lot of people. You mentioned a lot of partnerships. I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit more about the roles that relationships play in the work you did. Um, yeah, they're they're incredibly important. Um, I mean, my my main partner in crime and colleague is uh, Alex Gray, and usually we present together when we go on outreach and things like that. And and he's really the leader that I follow. And uh, yeah, I just feel honored to work with him. And uh, it's been it's been great, and I I look forward to continuing it. So and then I you know there's so many people. Yeah, I, that uh, this project wouldn't have been possible without the support of uh, you know everyone that a lot of people that are here so thank you uh, even Gagwilla, uh I see he's here and uh he you know he's the one that brought me to uh McGill University and uh yeah it, it's uh, a collaboration across uh, uh my friend Jeff that I mentioned Jeff Morneau he does outreach um as well so and then everyone you know always invites me and, and Ben uh, Gibo uh is a, a great friend and well known within the uh, First People's House community at McGill and he kind of uh is a a really funny guy that always uh, has something going on like oh come drum with us or uh yo bro come over here and it's uh it, it you know you shouldn't say no because it's always going to be a wonderful adventure that's fantastic um thanks for sharing that joel we have a couple more people joining thanks everyone who's turned their cameras on this makes this a much more enjoyable experience i think for joel and i um as we're speaking here today um joel uh you talked about entering different communities and going in and doing work in different communities which is amazing was there challenges associated with COVID 19 and doing all the moving around that you did uh yeah there, there were there were many challenges i think as you saw in the uh some of the pictures of our outreach we were always wearing masks mostly um and that yeah that was important and then sometimes uh, we had big outreach plans like in the fall and then it got delayed a bit like uh, ganawage um changed their their protocol with regard to visiting um but you know we made it work and then what i'm grateful for is uh as you know i have three components in this project where um, the videos we have, and then the actual in-person outreach, and then the uh, mid-chief stories that I've been working on. So that that made it uh, very much doable. Um, and, I, and the flexibility, too, of the Pathy Foundation Fellowship, uh, I'm grateful for, um, because uh, anytime I met with uh, Jess or Adam, it was always like circling back to, well, does it connect with your why? And uh, does it make sense? Um, so, you know, um, also, if you're interested in the art that I've made, I'm giving it away for free um, in terms of like, I can send you a digital copy and you can print it or um, yeah, I'd love to uh, connect there as well. I just shared Joel's email in the chat so that you can send him an email asking for some of that artwork he's just offering up. Um, Joel, can you tell us maybe a little bit about your why? I know you just mentioned it, but I think there's an opportunity to dive in a little deeper maybe. Uh, sure. Yeah. Um, I think uh, the why is what drives uh, Alex and me. I, I'm, you know, I don't want to speak for Alex, but I, you know, he has, I, I'm really, really envious of his job. It's awesome. He, he working with the Indigenous Health Professions Program, especially before the pandemic, when he gets to actually do a lot of outreach um, and then work on the uh, Eagle Spirit Science Futures Camp. And I actually just started a job uh, or I started officially in June, but I'm doing like onboarding now and trainings. Um, and I joined this company and I'm the second indigenous engineer in the whole department of engineering. And uh, I just feel very blessed and grateful for that. And I wouldn't have been here if it uh, wasn't for, as I mentioned, the kind of being pushed in, in that direction and having support, a strong support network and things like that. So um now it's my turn. I remember when I went to the very first ACES conference that Alex took us to, we walked into a room and there was like 2000 indigenous professionals, engineers, and students there in one room. And, you know, if you go back to uh, the university, I think in the faculty of engineering, when I studied, um, there was maybe, I think like six of us out of 600 students um, who identified uh, as indigenous uh, students. And, and they, you know, the, the representation going back to the why, uh, that I talked about in the beginning, um, you know, why is there a lack of representation? And I think a big part of it is just the way that um, science is talked and approached 
in uh, regular schools and even universities. Um, so I think, you know, connecting traditional knowledge with science and and learning to be proud and and have pride of your nation and your community um, is so important. And now it's my turn. Um, now that I'm becoming an engineer, and it I, I'll be, the, you know, one to hopefully give back, or I'm going to continue for my rest of my life and all with this project as well. Um, so I look forward to it. Yeah. Awesome, Joel. Uh, we have a question from Misko. He says, where do you see your project moving forward? I absolutely love the idea behind the videos, the two-eyed seeing approach, and would be excited to see more. Oh, this is actually great because I do have more videos from Joel that I can share. So I'll post those in the chat while Joel answers this question. Yeah, uh, thanks. Um, we have uh, Alex and I made, so mainly the videos have been shown through like the Indigenous Health Professions Program. Um, on outreach trips and things like that. And then through the Eagle Spirit Science Futures Camp. Um, but really it's up to, uh, I wanna be very clear. I hope that this has been clear this whole presentation is that we're like a team, Alex and I. So we have to make these decisions together. And we've always had this plan that, okay, we'll release the videos on YouTube as well. And it's kind of weird because some of the videos we're just gonna take and like put the brand uh, Tessin as you saw the logo in the beginning of our presentation. And um, yeah, so we're at the stage where we have a YouTube channel, which you can follow and wait for the posts, um, which would be great. And then the, those videos will be more public. Um, but the, the Google Drive that I've shared is just some of the videos that we had today. Um, and I'm actually uploading as we speak some, so stay tuned, please. <laughs> and I think um, I want to continue this project uh, throughout, even as I'm you know, starting my career uh, as an engineer, I think it's important to uh, keep doing these videos. Um, so I have to coordinate this with Alex. Um, you know, I'm, I'm always connected. I'm a Sequoia member of like the, uh, you know, ACES, um, which Alex and I joke about. It sounds like this very prestigious, um, whatever that means, Sequoia membership. <laughs> we used to think that you had to pay to be one, but someone, I, guess, I think you do, someone sponsored me. So I'm a lifetime member of ACES. So I plan on going back to the conferences and, uh, you know, doing talks and, and, and giving back any way I can, showing videos. Um, yeah, I, I always have to be like to answer Ms. Q's question directly is uh, I don't see the project going away and I'm, we're going to keep making videos and we have, have to post them publicly because I think hopefully they can be shared, not just within our um, IHPP network, um, but this is a discussion that we have to have deeper uh, with Alex and, and see what he thinks too. Yeah. Awesome. Um, I'm going to invite anybody one last chance. If you have questions for Joel, I'll give you a minute to think about them. And in the meantime, Joel, is there anything you wanted to talk about today, but you like ran out of time or felt like you didn't have a chance to say it? I'm going to turn it back over to you like this, if that's okay. Oh, um, no, thank you. I, I think there's always something. Yeah. I, you know, I enjoy rambling, but uh <laughs> Yeah, I think I think I see Alex. I think he should we should hear from Alex. I'm going to put him on the spot if he doesn't mind, because he's the all star here uh, and he can maybe share something and what he thinks. Uh, I'm really putting him on the spot. But Alex, are you able to talk? Yeah, I can chat a little bit. Can everyone hear me just fine? First off, uh, Joel, uh, the person who does all the work and doesn't expect any of the uh, shout outs or the recognition. Uh, Joel, oh, no. very much, uh, you know, oh, no. You know, you, you, you highlight me a lot in these videos, but honestly, none of this would have happened without you. Um, and, you know, I was very happy to hear that, you know, you got involved with this fellowship. Uh, so the projects that you were able to, you know, help along with very much, I think, heightened the experience for the students involved. Um, you know, I am a firm believer in the fact that kids need heroes. Um, it's why I work in the field that I do. And Joel, you know, with, you know, being able to see where you've been able to go on your personal journey, academically, now professionally, um, you know, you're now a hero for those kids. And I applaud you on that. I uh, look forward to seeing, you know, what you, we can accomplish, um, you know, in our own pursuits and our uh, collaboration. Oh, thank you so much, Alex. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, uh, thank you. That's the very kind words. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, uh, no, this is, it's been a long time coming because it's, uh, it's such a, yeah, I've been, I was in school for so long, like my undergrad and then master's and then PATHY. And it feels like this is the, you know, and then I just recently moved away. Um, I'm in Ontario now. And it's just like the, you know, seeing these people here, like Kaguila, 
Do you want to say hi? <laughs> Put Google, Google on, on the. Uh... <clears throat> sure. Um, honestly, Joel, I have no words. I don't even know what to say. I'm in awe. Like, you're a right star, uh, man. No, no, uh, this is, I wouldn't be here if it weren't for Gagwilla. Thanks for the shout outs, but yeah, it's, you've done a lot of work and you've created a quite a network and uh, I'm just so impressed with the clips that you, you created with Alex. Like, wow, he's so creative. I love it. <clears throat> like um, I've been around since the earlier days, you know, um, it's funny. <laughs> I mean, I was at the McGill I think starting in 2010, but Alex was there like before as a participant, as a camper. Yeah. So, I mean, Alex has like the, you know, deepest sort of grounding and insights and I'm glad you're, you're teamed up and um, happy about the designation as Sequoia, you know, at ACES, uh, <laughs> just amazing. I mean, yeah. uh, the arts um, just, you know, I mean, so I was, I was the guy in touch with Joel before he got to McGill. I mean, before he, you know, while he was still in, in Cocker and Alberta um, and still in touch, you know, uh, all these years later. And it's just been, wow, what a, and Alex too, you know, like what, a, what transformations, you know? And, and, and Felix, like, you recruited Felix as well. And Felix, <laughs> who's on the phone, I think, I mean, the line too. <laughs> yeah, I'm so thrilled, you know, uh, to have intersected with uh, these bright stars is what I'll say. Um, and definitely look forward to the future and staying connected and um, continuing to share the enthusiasm, you know, that we are sort of all about. Um, but um, yeah, I just uh, super thrilled to be working with uh, Felix and, and yourself. Uh, for the, the Pathy, you know, uh, the whole video project, I mean, is what is whatever I was involved with. Um, and just, I think those videos are so powerful. Um, so kudos to you guys. And um, I don't know, I just, uh, I mean, I'm, 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 you guys are, you have so much, so many reasons to be so proud of yourselves, you know, and Thank you for sharing your stories. And I mean, I'm proud of you guys. I'm not, I don't even know what I did. Honestly, I, I really don't. It's really, you guys are just your own selves. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, and awesome communicators. So again, good on you. So that's it. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much, Gagula. Very I'm going to jump in and uh, <laughs> add a little something to what oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, both Alex and Gagula said. Um, I, I have to second with what Alex said. Joel is the type of person who is very humble. He does not like to take credit for what he does. And he likes to throw his friends uh, under the spotlight. And I recall during uh, this year, he was collaborating with uh, another graduating fellow. I believe, I'm not sure. I think, I believe her name is Michaela. And then she was doing something here in yeah. Montreal. And yeah. she invited Joel over to come and talk to the group with which she's working. And then I showed up with another one of my friends i wasn't too sure what was going on so i, I sort of just showed I, up and I, then he threw me I under, under it. Yeah, the I, told, I, I told you it was a ted talk <laughs> <laughs> that's so, why i showed up <laughs> and and that's exactly what i told the group i said i think honestly like joel you have to learn to give yourself credit for the amazing work that you do and i've seen you and alex work together and you guys were a great team and i think you have to learn to congratulate yourself for the great stuff you've done and even the art like he was talking during that it was a uh, it was like a talking circle i think with uh, michaela and he was talking for like over an hour like just straight <laughs> talking this his stuff and i had never seen joel like that before because like we're friends you know so i i never really saw him in that context um and then even our other friend jeff was there and we both looked at each other when it was done and was like wow I had no idea Joel was like that. So congrats to you, Joel, to you, Alex. I think uh, your stuff was uh, was great. I'm looking forward to having one of those uh, pieces of art. And I'm also happy to uh, start this fellowship uh, this year. I'm going to be traveling to Nova Scotia in a, in a couple of days to start my uh, thing. So congrats to you guys. I think you did some amazing work. And the Indigenous youth are definitely 
very grateful for what you guys have done and the indigenous community as a whole as well. So congrats to you guys. Oh, thank you so much, Felix. Uh, really appreciate that. Uh, yeah, very kind words again, all of you guys. Uh, I, this is uh, actually very special to me because I, it's like the, it's like, I, I mean, I'll see you again, but it feels like a, a final goodbye. Like that is so strong, right? <laughs> like everything led up to this, uh, you know, you know, leaving Montreal and everything. <laughs> Anyway, um, we just yeah. have a comment in the chat from Carrie Lynn who says, amazing job, Joel and Alex, and looking forward to meeting you, Felix. Um, I think this is a really beautiful note to end on. Joel, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us about your initiative today, as well as actively calling your circle um, or your network of supporters and collaborators. It was so great to be able to hear from everybody else today as well. One last time in the chat, I'm gonna share the link to the Google Drive that has the videos from Joel and Alex. And I'm also gonna share Joel's email address. If you want to revisit this presentation, it's gonna be posted on the Pathy YouTube channel, as well as the Facebook page. Uh, we have more presentations coming up this afternoon at 3.30 p.m. Eastern time on Zoom or Facebook Live. We are going to hear from Daniela speaking about her initiative learning and technology mentoring for Moncton newcomers, which took place in Moncton, New Brunswick. Additionally, we have presentations happening on Friday. You can find the schedule for those on the Pathy Foundation Fellowship social media too. And all the presentations that have been happening since Monday are on the Facebook page and the YouTube page if you wanna see those as well. So thanks so much for coming everyone. And again, huge thank you to Joel and Alex and Felix and yeah, everybody. <laughs> <And everyone>. yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. Take care.